The problem of scientific fraud has been reaching epidemic proportions in recent years, with increasing numbers of retracted papers in scientific journals. There's even a blog called Retraction Watch that keeps tabs on these things. In my recent conversation with Ron Bailey, Reason Magazine's fine science writer, I asked him about what he thinks is behind all this. Well, the, the increase was substantial and, and mostly, well, what they found is that 70% of the papers that were withdrawn over the last 30 years or so turned out to be fraudulent. And that was what shocked them. Because not just mistaken, not but mis fraudulent. But fraudulent. The, the data was obviously clearly made up or the results were, were, were uh, tweaked with in some way or other. And the problem that you have is probably there's a huge amount of competition inside the field right now and you basically try your best to attract grants your way. So that's what you're doing. You're tweaking the results in order to get something really interesting uh, so that more grants will come your way. The problem I find though is, in a, a deeper problem though, is the stuff that um, a, a, a epidemiologist named Ioannidis has come up with. It basically looks at the data and his conclusion, a really brilliant article, is that most scientific results reported in journals are false. <laughs> Just false. And by what that he means, essentially, that they've not been replicated, that they are, the effects, that the, especially in epidemiology, that they are trying to find are so tiny that it would be almost impossible to replicate them in any case. Mm -hmm. And so, basically, we're not getting a lot of extra information out of this process. And again, the reason that these data, that he would argue these things are false is not fraud so much, because they're actually playing the techniques the, fa the fair way, but that the effects they're defining are so small that essentially people are trying to publish whatever they can in order to get more grants. Mm -hmm. And so they'll just publish anything. Now there was an, an even worse study, in my opinion, came out recently, uh, about six months ago, where a couple of researchers were, that worked for biotech companies were looking for cancer targets. So they were, they were, they were looking through the literature, the, the peer-reviewed literature, to find targets for new drugs for cancer. And so they tried to replicate the 50 most cited papers in this area, and they discovered only seven, I think, of them were actually replicable. Oh. And again, what has happened, they talked, in one example, they talked to one of the lead authors of one of the major papers, and the, the guy said, well, we did six experiments and we only reported one, the other five failed. Hmm. And this is not good. <laughs> So, I mean, is it, uh, I'm sort of amazed here, is it too strong to say that we might have better science if we had less science? I think that is too strong <laughs> to say. Uh, I, I, there are some techniques that are coming along now. I, I can't remember the name, but there's a company out there that will now offer the following. It's basically, if you set aside some money in your study, they will replicate your study. Uh -huh. And this way, they will be able, and if and they'll report what they find, and if it is replicable, if, if they can replicate it, then that gives it a much stronger uh, sense of being the case. Right. And so that would be a good thing. So there's some institutional things we might actually try to do so in that line. What we need, in addition to the legendary journal of irreproducible results, we need a <laughs> journal of negative results. We certainly do. Right. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. <laughs>